It is so important to talk about money when you're dating, but it's a really scary and often a taboo topic for most people. I believe that the best time to get on the same page financially is right away, not in six months, not in a year. And it doesn't have to be so hard, especially when you separate out the emotions about money from the facts about money. Understanding your partner's financial values and goals early on can help you build a strong foundation for the future. It can also reveal any big red flags around debt or poor spending habits. And that's why I'm sharing five ways to talk about money early on to avoid problems in the future. Number one, practice open communication. It all comes down to communication. As early as the first date, I encourage you to learn about your date's finances by asking some simple questions like, are you saving up for anything fun? This is going to give you insight into their personal financial goals and values, and you can see if you're both on the same page. You can even playfully ask to compare credit scores. This is my credit score. What's yours? And have a little challenge, competition. I've actually done that and it was kind of fun. However, if this person repeatedly expresses their concerns about money on the first date or they blame their ex for wiping out their finances, that is a big red flag. If you find your date disrespects your opinions about money and how you spend it, that's also a red flag. And if you can't respect their opinions, just walk away. Your values are not aligned and that's going to lead to bigger issues later on. Number two, know your personal money story. After a few dates, if you're becoming more interested in this person, it's time to discuss your money stories. These are the beliefs about money that were formed by how we were raised, our experiences that we've had, or our financial lessons that we've learned along the way. You can ask simple questions like, my parents always fought about money, did yours? Or my parents always told us we never had enough money, so I got nervous around spending too much. How about you? Knowing each other's personal money story helps you identify your emotions around money as well as any bad financial habits that you might have. It also clears the way to set money goals and make better financial choices if you become a couple. Sharing your money stories can also help you both understand where you're coming from financially and it will help you have productive discussions about money in the future. Number three, build transparency and trust around money. As your relationship grows, there are several things that you need to consider when it comes to finances. Do you both live within your means? You can find out more about that by asking a question like, Hey, I've been thinking about building a monthly budget. Do you use one? Learn more about each other by discussing how you both approach spending money and ask about their short-term plans for spending and saving money. And again, this is if you're starting to get a little more serious with this person. Eventually, if you do end up as a couple, you're going to have to decide whether you're going to merge finances and accounts, whether you're going to separate them or find a middle ground that works for both of you. And I've had couples that I've worked with who have done this pretty early on because they knew that this was a great relationship. They have money talks every single week. The most important thing is transparency around money and trust between two partners from the very start. And as your relationship evolves and grows, you have several op options for handling your finances. Some people find it helpful to divide their shared expenses. Talk about that early on by asking questions like, how much do you want to spend on the weekend getaway that we're planning? One person might plan to pay for dinners out and the other one might buy groceries. If there's a disparity between the partners about how much they earn, one might take on bigger travel expenses like the hotels or the airfare, and the other one could cover meals and day excursions. The key is to discuss it, to talk openly about these things and ensure that both people feel like they're paying their fair share of expenses and they agree on their plan together. Number four, talk about debt. If either partner has debt, be transparent and open about it. 
clarify how much debt, the type of debt, and the reasons behind the debt. I dated a guy with debt, and I found out really early on, and we talked about a plan to pay it down, and he never did. And that was the thing that started to undo the relationship. It was a false promise. And he had credit card debt, which really scares me. It doesn't feel safe to me. So transparency and lack of judgment, don't judge them about their debt, but you know, see that they're, they've got a plan. It's important to decide what you'll do also if the debt is not paid. Number five, address retirement in the future. For new couples in midlife, it's important to discuss your plans for retirement and your vision for the future. Do your financial long-term goals line up? Identify your vision for your lifestyle, for travel, and even work and income for the future. At this stage of life, both partners have had years of financial experience, so it's important to make sure you have similar expectations about when and how you plan to retire and what that looks like for both of you. Talk about money early and often. Having open communication about money is crucial for building and sustaining healthy relationships, but it can be awkward to start a deeper conversation about money. I recommend you start with something like, hey, I'm really enjoying how our relationship is growing and I'd like to talk about something important. You know how they say the number one reason couples fight is money? Well, I don't want that to be us. So sometime soon, I'd like to tell you where I stand financially and how I think about my money. And I'd like to hear about those things from you. What do you think? You know, just put it out there. Give them space to take it in, to respond, and if things get a little tense or emotional, it's okay. If they shut off or they shut down the conversation, take a pause and then try again. And then say something like, I know money is not the easiest topic to talk about. How about we give it some time and maybe we try again in a few days. And if you're met with a hard no, that's a red flag. They're not open. I hope that's not the case because if you can build a relationship on trust and openness around money, you will both be better off.